Hello, everybody. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, it's, uh, well, it's Monday, August 1st. Can you believe how time flies as I indicated on the Quick Takes uh, calendar? It's, uh, we're already in August, and uh, before you know it, uh, we'll be in September, October, and so on. Uh, I guess uh, now that the market's uh, doing so well in uh, July and maybe in August, uh, then we can always worry about something, which is uh, September and October tend to uh, sometimes be um, sell-off months for the uh, S&P 500. But the way I look at it is uh, they've had a tendency to be uh, months that provide buying opportunities. And we've certainly seen uh, lots of buying opportunities back on June 16th, uh, but uh, there's still buying opportunities, but the markets obviously had a, a nice little rally. Um, a lot of things to talk about. So let's just uh, get right into the uh, chart sharing here. And I, uh, before we look at the, um, before we look at the um, um, charts for the morning briefing, uh, let's look at this morning's um, release of the uh, purchasing managers uh, manufacturing index. And it's consistent with, I think, what the market's uh, been uh, suddenly discounting. I think in the first six months of the year, the market was discounting that uh, we're going to have a recession, that uh, analysts are delusional about earnings, uh, that the Fed's going to have to uh, uh, tighten uh, to the point of uh, causing uh, a recession and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, we all know it. We've kind of lived, lived it the past six months. It's been a tough six months for sure. Uh, but then uh, all of a sudden, commodity prices looked like they've been uh, coming down since uh, basically uh, early June. Uh, the uh, bond yield uh, peaked, I think it was uh, June uh, 14th. Um, and uh, we've had data that's showing a slowdown, but uh, not any sort of meaningful recession scenario. And uh, that's really confirmed by the uh, PMI data today. As you can see, the Composite index over here is uh, rolling over. Um, as you probably know, we've been watching uh, the regional business surveys that uh, districts provide, and they've been indicating things would be getting weaker. So uh, that's that's the case. Uh, the orders are below 50. If you go and read the uh, ISM's uh, press release, I think they'll tell you that a recession is usually associated with something more like uh, uh, 45 to 48 than it is with 52 uh, 0.8. That doesn't mean we can't still have a recession, uh, but um, I'm I'm thinking we're sort of in a mild recession, more like a growth recession, like a slowdown, uh, not the kind of uh, uh, hard landing that uh, causes analysts to slash their earnings estimates, uh, leading to a much lower market. Uh, and again, I think the market's come around to the, uh, that point of view. So new orders uh, on the weak side, production. Uh, still holding up re reasonably well. Uh, employment on the weak side, so maybe the labor market is going to start easing off, which the good news is it'll take some pressure off uh, wages. Supplier deliveries uh, are down uh, sharply, as you can see, so it certainly looks as though the supply chain disruptions have uh, abated uh, significantly. Um, meanwhile, inventories are piling up uh, because the consumers have pivoted away from buying goods to buying services, and uh, that's putting downward pressure on uh, the prices of, uh, of goods. And again, that's uh, something we want to see uh, in terms of bringing in inflation down. The market does seem to be thinking that, uh, you know, when that uh, June number came out uh, in, uh, uh, for, for, for when the May number came out for the CPI in June, it was another ugly number, and the market didn't seem to be phased by it. Um, I think the market has started to look uh, at the uh, outlook for the July CPI, which will be out uh, in, a, in a few days. Um, and uh, that uh, is likely to be moderating significantly, particularly on the food and energy side. But at uh, durable goods, inflation should also be showing continued moderation. It's the rent inflation that's going to be the problem, but uh, that doesn't mean that inflation can't moderate. It just means it's not going to go down to the Fed's 2% uh, target uh, anytime soon. So inventory is piling up. Um, again, the way companies respond to that is by cutting back orders and cutting back production, which is what we've just seen in the other charts. Uh, net exports not doing much one way or the other, kind of on, on the weakest side. Uh, imports a little bit on the strong side. Look at backlog of orders and supply, supplier deliveries. These two charts kind of go hand in hand. 
as indicating that uh, the uh, supply chain disruptions uh, have, have abated. And then uh, importantly, the uh, prices uh, paid index is uh, down as uh, we've been monitoring for you. The uh, business surveys that the Fed conducts have been indicating that the prices paid is coming down and prices received is coming down. So uh, that's all good news uh, on, on balance. Let's look at the, the charts here uh, for some assessment of uh, what's been happening uh, of late and where we're going from here. So we've had a, a nice uh, rally here. I think it's about a 12% rally in the S&P 500 from the June 16th low. We've been making the case that June 16th might have been the low uh, for this uh, bear market. Uh, everything seems to be on the fast forward these days. Uh, things happening very, very quickly. We had a V-shaped recovery from the pandemic. We uh, kind of got back to where we were before the pandemic in real GDP terms in about a year. Then we had a few months of what felt like an inflationary boom. Uh, then we've had the uh, past half year, it's kind of felt uh, like a, a stagflationary situation. Um, and the stock market's been moving pretty quick as well. We had that V-shaped recovery uh, in, in the market back here and following the pandemic, uh, a remarkable rally through here, and then a very nasty uh, sell-off bear market. Uh, but just when everybody got super bearish at this point, uh, back in January, uh, the week of uh, June 16th, uh, we pointed out that the investors' uh, intelligence bull bear ratio was as low as 0.6. It was as low as it was in March 2009, uh, just at the bottom of uh, the uh, uh, negative sentiment related to the great financial crisis. And by no means has anything we've experienced here so far been comparable to what it felt like back then, but yet, that's what sentiment has been. So sentiment has worked extremely well. Uh, I have regular conversations with my friend, Joe Feshbeck, who's uh, probably one of the great contrarian uh, day traders that I know. And uh, we've sort of been on the same uh, page that sentiment is an extremely important indicator of just the extent to which the market has capitulated and uh, exhausted the selling. Um, and again, I think this rally reflects uh, a perception that uh, you know, if, even if it's a technical recession, it's not that bad and it's not going to lead to a, a slashing of, uh, of earnings. Earnings, ironically, now that uh, companies, that now that uh, analysts are cutting back on their expectations, um, the market, of course, rallies because it looks ahead and it's looking ahead, uh, maybe even past the second half of the year uh, and, and into next year saying that things will get uh, uh, better. Uh, so here's the market again. Uh, bear market, 23.6%. Um, I, I don't know if there's an, actually an official uh, way of uh, categorizing something as a bear market. Uh, uh, if it's over down over 20%, that's a bear market, but uh, 164 days, and I think about 21 of those days, we were actually in bear market territory. Uh, is that really a bear market? Well, let's not get into that one. Let's just call it a bear market. We'll keep, keep it colored that, that way. Um, Sure, sure felt like a bear market back there in late 2018, but it wasn't, it was 19.8% and that only lasted 95 days. So as I said, the analysts are uh, cutting back their estimates. And you can see that uh, the blue line is the weekly um, tracking that we do of the analyst expectations for 2023, uh, 2022, and they're just barely shaving 2022. But as you can see, they they were increasing it and they were increasing 2023. So now they're shaving it and you're starting to see that reflected in the time weighted average of these two, which is uh, forward earnings. And we think forward earnings are going to basically be flat uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, and if the multiple stays around here, 17.2, that would argue uh, for a range bound flat, flat market. I know that uh, suddenly there's a couple of bulls uh, out there talking about uh, all-time record highs, but uh, hey, I would welcome an all-time record high by the end of this year. I think it's more likely to happen by the end of uh, next year. I think that to uh, anticipate a record high at the end of this year, you'd have to either take the PE up to 20 uh, from where, uh, you know, relative to where forward earnings is right now, or take forward earnings up to $280. And as you can see, forward earnings right now are 239. So I think that's, that's a stretch. Um, 
But uh, again, just as analysts are, uh, I don't know if they got the, they didn't get the recession memo, then maybe they got the growth recession memo, whatever it is, uh, they're cutting back some. And just as if uh, starting, starting to do that, uh, the analysts are get the investors are getting excited and the PE jumped from 15.3 all the way up to 17.2. Uh, and obviously that's, uh, that's been what's driving the, the market here. So as you probably know, I've been making this uh, uh, notion, uh, this analogy that uh, uh, analysts have been from uh, Venus and uh, investors have been from Mars uh, over the past six months. And now it seems like uh, maybe they're switching planets as I wrote in the morning briefing today. Uh, and the uh, analysts now are uh, suddenly uh, uh, all happy and uh, and and uh, sort of on Venus, whereas the uh, analysts have uh, moved towards Mars and uh, getting a little bit more concerned about the outlook for, for earnings. But anyway, you look at it, the market's doing uh, much better. Um, and one of the reasons it's doing better clearly is because uh, the bond yield has stopped going up. Uh, the bond yield went up to almost three and a half percent at this point. It's come down. Our trustee relationship here, uh, copper gold ratio has worked extremely well. I told you that uh, bond yields were way too low back here when the copper gold ratio was taken off and stabilizing. And now the copper gold ratio is coming down. And uh, that would actually augur for like something like a 2% bond yield. Uh, it seems unfathomable. Uh, but then again, uh, look at crude oil prices uh, this, uh, today. Uh, there's some news out of Bloomberg that uh, 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 Saudi Arabia has been pumping up uh, oil production under pressure from its uh, customers. And apparently they've been doing that. And that's uh, bringing the price of oil down. And as we all know, a big, big part of this inflation problem we've had for the past year has been energy uh, driving up the costs of everything. Uh, so to the extent that that moderates, uh, that would certainly uh, be uh, welcome. Here's the a surprise index, uh, a Citigroup surprise index uh, versus the 13 week change in the 10 year yield. And as you can see, that's a pretty good correlation. And that too suggests that uh, the bond yield should be coming down. I guess the bad news is both of them are indicative of a slowing economy, of certainly a slower global economy. Uh, but uh, uh, as we've seen many times in the past, it does take a slowdown, if not an outright recession, to bring inflation down. And if we can get just a slowdown to bring inflation down, that would be fantastic uh, and conceivable, in my opinion. Uh, meanwhile, um, the uh, Treasury yield spread tend to uh, two years certainly is consistent with a slowdown, uh, maybe a recession, but uh, that's not uh, our forecast. Again, the consumer's balance sheet's in very good shape. The uh, corporate balance sheets are in very good shape. And most importantly, uh, it's hard to see a credit crunch when the banks uh, are doing so well. You know, I, I know Jamie Dimon uh, predicted that a hurricane's coming, but uh, uh, then again, if the banks are anticipating a hurricane and are being careful about lending, that's not necessarily a credit crunch. Uh, that's just better lending standards, which reduces the chances that something will, will break. Uh, so uh, the uh, two-year note uh, uh, also peaked uh, back in uh, mid-June, at the same time that the stock market bottomed. And uh, uh, the uh, two-year note, I think, is a excellent uh, indicator of what the fixed income markets think that the Fed funds rate is going to be within the next 12 uh, months. And as you can see, uh, we peaked here again at uh, almost 3.5%, and it's been coming down, suggesting that the uh, two years expecting maybe one more hike of 50 basis points, maybe in September, and that'll do, uh, do the trick. And we're Kind of agree with that. Uh, interesting to see how well the bond market's doing. This is the bond mutual fund flows on a 12-month basis. And uh, you had maximum uh, all-time record buying of uh, mutual funds and ETFs in the bond market uh, uh, exactly at the wrong time here, just as the bond yield was about to go straight up. And uh, so they've been panicking out. And we've seen that uh, inflows have uh, come down dramatically. And yet uh, we can see that the bonds are doing uh, uh, pretty well. Part of that may be that uh, while uh, domestic uh, bond investors have cooled their heels for uh, buying bonds, uh, and while uh, the markets know that uh, the Fed is uh, just starting a quantitative tightening, 
Uh, that uh, may be offset by the fact that the strong dollar is indicative of foreigners uh, concluding that uh, it's Teaneck time. Uh, there is no other uh, country uh, as a uh, safe haven uh, in a very messy global uh, environment. And so we have seen that uh, total private plus official net capital inflows into the US uh, have been in record high territory of around $1.3 trillion. Uh, we've seen that their foreigners purchases of bonds over the past 12 months is quite uh, significant at uh, $796.8 billion. On the other hand, they've been selling equities. Maybe they're coming back now, uh, but just by buying bonds and helping to bring stop the bond route uh, from pushing yields any higher and maybe contributing to the weakness in the bond yield, uh, that's helped on the valuation multiple side, which of course is what's been driving the uh, stock market since June 16. Um, so uh, the key of course remains in inflation. Uh, I think we've all known that uh, the market's not gonna bottom until there's a perception that uh, inflation is uh, turning the corner that we peaked. And I think there is a perception that uh, the June inflation number uh, might very well turn out to be the peak in inflation. People are looking towards the July number and uh, betting that at least the energy and the food components are gonna moderate. But they can also bet that the durable goods inflation rate will continue to moderate. And as I said, the one thing that really stands out as, a, as an underlying problem for getting inflation down at back to 2% is uh, rent inflation. But the market, I'm sure, will be more than happy to see inflation on a deflator basis, which is currently 6.8%. We're predicting it's going to come down to uh, uh, 4 to 5% in the second half of the year and 3 to 4% next year. Uh, so uh, here we are at 6.8%. Uh, the three month is still a little higher than that, which is a little troubling, uh, but uh, the core inflation rate's about in line uh, with uh, the uh, uh, PCED year over year. Uh, a little bit uh, uh, also somewhat concerning is food inflation still remained uh, elevated, especially on a three month basis relative to the year over year. Uh, but uh, with this grain deal that uh, grain is not coming out of um, the, the Ukraine and out of Russia, uh, we're likely to see some moderation in global uh, grain prices, which uh, will certainly help. And then uh, the energy story um, uh, is the Saudis are pumping more oil and uh, oil that the Russians can't sell in Europe and other, in other places is going to China and India. So the oil is going out and it's going out at a discount. Uh, so this is somewhat encouraging to see the three month uh, rate, but these rates are insane, right? 43.5 year over year and 33.8. Uh, start throwing in some questions, by the way, in the Q&A, so, because uh, I'm almost uh, done with my monologue here. So if you have any questions, uh, please uh, post them. Um, so uh, here's the core PCED. Uh, you can see the yearly percent change is 4.8% uh, uh, on a year over year basis. Uh, now, durable goods is where we're seeing uh, some moderation here, as we've been uh, anticipating. And you can see that uh, the durable goods inflation rate, uh, year over year percent change, is 6.1%. Uh, and the three month uh, uh, percent change is 4.2%. Uh, 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 um, the non durables, uh, even that, excluding food and energy, of course has moderated. So um, these two are really what gives us some hope that uh, as we head into July, if we get moderation in food and energy as well, uh, plus durables and uh, core non-durables, that will uh, uh, help a lot. And the market seems to be anticipating that. And as I said, the services is being uh, pushed up by, by, by rent inflation. Oh, good. I'm glad to see it. We got, I'm getting a couple of questions. I was, for a minute there, I was wondering whether I was talking to myself. Uh, so here's uh, motor vehicles, new ones just remain an inflation issue. Uh, used cars, uh, much less so, as you can see from, uh, from that chart. Uh, household furniture and bedding is moderated uh, significantly and appliances, you, know, you would expect that furniture and appliances with what looks like a uh, housing recession uh, would be moderating and appliances are actually down 8.8% on a three month basis. Uh, auguring well for the outlook. Uh, the bad news is uh, rent inflation, uh, home prices soared. Uh, people can't afford to buy houses. They have to 
continue to rent. Uh, but anecdotally, I'm hearing that there is some signs of rent inflation moderating, but it's not going to moderate fast enough uh, to turn this around any, anytime soon. So again, uh, this will be uh, an ongoing problem. Um, we still have a wage price rent spiral when you look at uh, the data objectively uh, through June, and you can see uh, the wage component, the employment cost index of Fed Chair Powell uh, made a big deal about this at his press conference last week, and he said he'd be looking, he'd be looking to see what that does uh, when it comes out on Friday, on Friday. Well, it came out on Friday, and it didn't do anything good. Uh, it was still showing uh, a wage inflation. Now, of course, uh, if you're a worker, as, we, as most of us are, uh, you'd like to see your wages go up. Uh, but what's the point of having your wages go up if you go shopping and find that the prices have com increased completely offsetting that? So we, all of us want to see the wage price spiral stop spiraling. Uh, well, that's uh, kind of it on the uh, uh, sharing is caring side. Let's uh, go and uh, share some discussions here. Doug, uh, does the inverted forward curve trouble you? I noted that the three-month forward curve has three-month bills at 3.4% and three-year notes at 2.8%. Um, it's interesting. Um, the index of leading economic indicators, as you know, Doug, uh, includes uh, 10 components. And one of the components is the uh, yield curve spread. Uh, but they're still using the 10-year uh, minus uh, the Fed funds rate, which seems to be less and less uh, relevant these days to the extent that the Fed was behind the curve is now kind of scrambling to uh, catch up with the inflation curve. Uh, so we're all watching the 10 to two years and some of us are watching other spreads. I've started watching the two-year Fed funds rate uh, uh, because again, the two year seems to be a pretty good indicator of uh, where the market thinks the Fed funds is, is gonna go. Uh, so I, I would say that, uh, yeah, I'm concerned about it, but I don't, again, I, I think uh, we may just kind of a, have a spread out growth recession uh, rather than an outright uh, recession. It, it may never uh, be officially described as a recession um, by the dating committee of the uh, NBER. As you know, the index of coincident economic indicators really is the one that seems to uh, be most relevant to uh, the uh, NBER's decision. Uh, and right now in uh, June, it was at an all-time record high. And um, it's likely to go flat, maybe even come down some, uh, but uh, I'm, uh, I, I remain in the soft landing, uh, uh, slow motion, uh, recession kind of camp. Uh, I know that uh, uh, people want to be contrarians because uh, that's what the Fed's been uh, uh, saying, but uh, maybe it is being a contrarian actually agreeing with the Fed that there, may actually, there might actually be a path for them to raise rates, uh, which they have been doing. And that in that path, they might be able to slow the economy down uh, without a uh, hard landing uh, and bring inflation down. And I think that's what the stock market's getting excited about here. And so, of course, the debate uh, will uh, continue on whether this is just a rally in a bear market or we made a bottom in uh, at 3666 on June 16th. And my position is I've been making the case that uh, we probably made the, the, the low there. And it's not doesn't come with a money back guarantee, but I feel uh, increasingly uh, strongly about that. Okay, anonymous. Why why do you think the Fed will be done with one more fifty bit hike? I'm glad you asked me that because, as you know, Larry Summers who's done a pretty good job of anticipating that the Fed's helicopter money and and uh, Biden's uh, third round of checks would bring inflation back uh, in a in a meaningful way. He got that right. Uh, uh, but now uh, he and uh, Mohammed Alarian and others are beating up on the Fed, saying that uh, there's no way uh, that uh, they're at neutral at 2.5 percent. There's no way that they're on the uh, border of being restrictive, and there's no way that another 50 or 75 basis points is all it'll take uh, to bring inflation down. Uh, I counter that by saying that the critics are missing a, a couple of rather important points. One is. The dollar has been quite strong, and that's probably worth about 50 basis points in tightening. And then uh, quantitative tightening is uh, underway. Uh, it's only really starting, and that's got to be at least another 50 basis points. So there you have 100 basis points in tightening. 
with very conservative assumptions of uh, particularly with regards to quantitative uh, tightening, uh, the Fed may very well already be at neutral at 2.5% uh, to the extent that uh, quantitative tightening is equivalent to a rate hike and uh, as is the strong dollar. Uh, so that's where I'm coming from on, on uh, that, that issue. And you know what, the, the Fed officials, they must have, have uh, run their uh, FRB, uh, US FRB model uh, they were very quick to share that model with us when they were trying to justify quantitative easing uh, act two, uh, but they've been very silent about uh, the impact of these, uh, the dollar and of, of the impact of uh, quantitative tightening on uh, an effective uh, increase in, uh, in interest rates. Um, KB, uh, why do you believe inflation will come down to 5% this year. Where in the wage data do you see a slowdown? We are seeing crazy employment opportunities in our industry and no slowdown, having trouble keeping employees. Uh, that's a very good uh, point. Um, as I said, uh, the June data uh, mostly uh, confirms that uh, inflation remains, uh, doesn't confirm that we've hit a peak. Uh, uh, but then again, commodity prices do, the prices paid, prices received indexes do. Uh, average hourly earnings on a three month basis annualized uh, suggests that uh, we're starting to see some uh, moderation. Uh, historically, if you look at in inflation, you find that it's pretty symmetrical. Uh, it goes up pretty quickly and comes down pretty quickly uh, with the one exception being of course, the awful period of the 1970s. I don't think that uh, I mean, it's felt like extremely like the 1970s in many ways, but it's been the 1970s on fast forward. Heck, we've even got uh, the administration arguing that it's not a recession, just the way Jimmy Carter's administration tried to argue it wasn't a recession. But I, I guess Alfred Kahn said, OK, if I can't call it a recession, I'll call it a banana. So we've all been calling this thing a banana. Um, but you're I mean, you're right. I mean, uh, I, I balance the. Uh, you, ha you have to be an optimistic forecaster like myself and maybe some others uh, to glean that there are some signs that the inflation is moderating and the stock market seems to be buying into that right now. Um, but we'll be watching. Uh, Doug, again, um, I'm going to skip that one. Doug, we can talk about it uh, later. Uh, US dollar outlook. Good question. Um, I think the dollar is going to remain strong, quite honestly. Uh, uh, Europe uh, is uh, facing some real uh, some real issues uh, in the winter uh, with uh, natural gas uh, supplies uh, coming from from Russia. Uh, the European economic indicators look pretty good through the second quarter for real GDP, but the sentiment indicators are taking an absolute dive. So uh, you're st starting to see uh, a lot of pessimism about the coming uh, winter uh, coming out of uh, businesses and consumers. Uh, so we'll see how uh, the, the key is uh, uh, w whether or not uh, natural gas uh, becomes available. And it's pretty hard for them to get it uh, on a short term basis other than uh, through the pipelines coming out of Russia. Uh, maybe there'll be some sort of uh, resolution of the war along the way, but it uh, doesn't look like uh, what's going on in the battlefield is conducive to either side uh, being willing to sit down and, uh, and talk at this point. Um, so that's uh, that's one reason to expect a strong dollar. And then uh, the other reason is the Fed's uh, probably got one more tightening ahead. Uh, that'll leave the Fed funds rate considerably higher than where the Bank of Japan has uh, their uh, short-term rate, namely zero. Uh, so uh, I think both the euro and the yen uh, remain under downward pressure. Uh, and then emerging markets seem to be, ha be having their own problems one at a time, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka uh, Panama, um, uh, from uh, these uh, issues of uh, uh, high food and energy costs uh, leading to uh, popular unrest. So uh, I think emerging market uh, currencies may also uh, be weak. Uh, anonymous, if PCE comes down as slowly as you predict, does that imply a long-term change in public inflationary expectations as in the 1970s? Uh, good question. Um, again, I, I find it hard to believe that inflation is going to come right back down to 2% in short order, uh, given that uh, rent inflation is a big component of CPI. 
and uh, reasonably large in the PCED. Um, so I think uh, inflation is going to be slow to come down to two percent, but uh, three to four percent, uh, four to five percent is going to look pretty good in the second half of the year compared to uh, fears uh, that it's going higher. At least the direction of change, I think, will help to uh, keep a lid on inflationary expectations. As long as it keeps coming down, I don't think that people lock in uh, four to five percent. And uh, I think next year we'll get go down to three to four percent, and maybe that'll be it for a while. Uh, in a mild recession scenario, a tough recession scenario, you get to 2% uh, pr pretty quickly, including with, uh, with, with rent inflation. Um, but uh, it may very well be that 3 to 4% turns out to be a persistent uh, kind of inflation level for, for a while next year. And I will not be surprised, as I've said in the past, if the Fed changes its inflation target from 2% to 3%. But we don't have to go there right now. Let's, so let's see how things unfold. Uh, take it one more question uh, from Michael. Uh, what would you be looking for to alert you to the possibility that we are experiencing now would actually be a bear market rally? Uh, well, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I guess uh, be more the most uh, concerning uh, problem would be that uh, we just find that inflation really isn't coming down. Uh, there's a lot of high hopes that uh, the July CPI is going to show quite a bit of moderation. Uh, if you go on social media, there's uh, some charts that uh, the inflation rate uh, on a month over a month basis is uh, tracking at something like 0.2 to 0.3% uh, in July. I think that's the Cleveland Fed has some data like that. Um, if it turns out that the July numbers uh, aren't as moderate as the markets are expecting, uh, that could uh, suddenly uh, raises the alarm that uh, we're not even close to a peak and that uh, the Fed's got a lot further to go and uh, so on and so forth. One last one from George. Where do you see the S&P 500 by year end? Also, where do you see S&P uh, for 2023? Um, again, uh, I think there's uh, already some talk uh, by my, one of my competitors about getting to a new record high uh, by the end of the year for the S&P 500. Uh, I'd like to believe that. Uh, I think it's more likely to happen by the end of next year. Uh, I think we still have some issues with regards to uh, a, a relatively weak economy and what that does to earnings. Uh, again, I'm looking for forward earnings to be flat and the forward PE to be around uh, around here, 15 to, uh, 15 to 17, which makes for a flat market with some, some volatility. Um, but uh, let's just uh, put it uh, that uh, I think we made a low uh, on June uh, 16th until uh, further notice or until I'm, I realize that I'm wrong about that. Uh, and uh, with the goal of uh, seeing a new high in the market by the end of uh, next year, let me leave you with that thought. And uh, thank you uh, again for, for joining me. Uh, have a great week.